Well, good morning. Uh, welcome back to church. I, uh, we are in, a, uh, in the middle of a series called Boldness. Uh, talked, kicked that off last week, talked about boldness, and I don't know if you are joining us uh, back for the first time this, this Sunday, or maybe you were here with us last week, but uh, hopefully uh, you did something bold this week. Anybody do anything bold this week? Raise your hand. I know one person did, because they told me before service, and, uh, but it, I, I loved it. Uh, I, won't, I won't tell you what they did, <laughs> but it was pretty bold. <laughs> It's pretty bold. So we are we are doing that. We you know we we march. Uh, Cheryl and I were just talking this morning about how um, so much time and energy and preparation goes into Easter Sunday, uh, and I don't I don't know if you realize, but we had a thousand fifty four people here on Easter Sunday, which was crazy. Uh, and you probably rail it, you probably recognized that in the parking lot when you tried to leave. But uh, great great. You know, we, we, put, we put all this time and energy in, and really begging you and asking you guys to invite people, and, and we invite people every to Easter, and that happened, and some people showed, a lot of people showed up, and some of you guys are back, and so we really appreciate that, but that really should be something that we do every week. I mean, uh, have you invited any, you know, 80% of people that come to church that uh, say that they were invited by someone. So I don't know uh, if you invited anyone this week or not, or if you were bold this week, but uh, we are talking about that, and it's really my desire for us. And one of the things uh, as a pastor, and, and I talk to Pastor Mark a lot, and one of the things that we try to do here on a regular basis um, it, it's one thing to try to get uh, people to church, and um, you know, and then we feel good about ourselves because we can say, "Oh, we had a thousand people at church," you know. But really, that means nothing to me unless uh, each one of you, uh, unless collectively as a body of believers, that we are growing in our faith and we are actually uh, doing uh, what through the week what God is telling us to do, and we're being obedient outside of just coming to church on Sunday and sitting and filling a pew and. And, and feeling good about ourselves. So, so my, my question, uh, hopefully for all of you, is, is that are, are you really living this out? Because really life happens Monday through Saturday, doesn't it? It doesn't happen in this hour that we spend on Sunday. And, and, and hopefully this isn't the culmination of, of your walk with Christ. And so that's our goal. So, we'll, so, so the purpose of this message series that I want to try to drive home is that we become bold, passionate followers of, of Jesus Christ, that, that, it, that it's more than just talking the talk, that we begin to walk the walk out in our daily lives. And so uh, last week we talked about some amazing boldness from Peter and John, and uh, uh, two followers of, of Jesus' disciples, <clears throat> and, and Peter preached this fiery sermon, and thousands of people gave their life to Christ. Uh, we talked about that in the second chapter of Acts and in the fourth chapter of Acts, but uh, we mentioned in, in how they mentioned the name of Jesus and, and really kind of got them in trouble, and, and that's really no different today in the culture that we live in. If, uh, if, if you go out of here uh, and, um, you know, you mention the name of Jesus at work or with the people that, that maybe aren't followers of Jesus Christ, it, it makes people uncomfortable. It just, it just freaks people out. The name of Jesus uh, will we'll tend to pe make people uncomfortable. And, it, and if you don't believe that's true, I, I challenge you to go talk to your seminar, like, hey, you know, I had a great time Sunday spending time with Jesus. And they're going to like, okay, this guy's <laughs> He's one of those guys. But anyway, we're, we're trying to, to get around that in our, in our walk with Christ, and I want to try to help us with that. And boldness, uh, we learned last week, is really born out of belief. And I, and I think if you really believe something, uh, nobody's going to change your mind. You're, gonna, you're going to be naturally bold if you really and truly believe it. Uh, and the measure of what we believe directly impacts the level of boldness in our life. Um, uh, do you really believe in the resurrection? And if you do, and if we really, and I mean really believe that God of the universe sent his son to die for you and rose from their grave, that he has called you for his purpose, that he provides strength through the power of his Holy Spirit, then there really isn't anything that we can't accomplish as followers of Jesus Christ. One of the most famous scriptures in the Bible, uh, outside of John 3.16, because most people uh, seen, have seen that in the end zone at a football game at some point in time, but John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only, you know, we know that passage, but one of the other, you know, uh, the most famous scriptures scriptures that I see a lot. You see a lot of tattoos. <laughs> I don't know. People like this one for a tattoo. So, well, we have a tattoo artist here today. No, just kidding. If you want to get one after the service. 
<clears throat> but a lot of people have this tattooed on them. They, you know, it's their life verse or whatever, and it's Philippians 4.13, right? Have you heard that one before? Anybody probably can quote that. A lot of people can probably quote that one. It's a famous one. It's Philippians 4.13, and it says, For I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. It's a famous passage of Scripture. We hear it all the time. But my question is this morning, and, and, and I, my goal is for, for each one of you as you sit here, not to just listen to me to ramble, but really to do kind of some self-evaluation this morning and ask yourself, do I really believe that? Do I really believe that I can have a relationship with Jesus Christ, that, that it's not some weird kind of thing that people have a hard time getting their head around, that yes, thank you, you got somebody that does, but, but do you really believe that? And if so, because I, th- I think if I asked that question and said, do you really believe in Jesus Christ? Do you really believe that he died on a cross on Easter and rose from the grave? Do you really believe that? If I asked everybody, there would be a lot of hands that would be raised this morning. I'm not going to ask you to do that. But, but I'm guessing there would be a ton of hands that would, would shoot up. Yes, I believe that. But my question is, if we really believe that, wouldn't that be reflected in how we live Monday through Saturday? It, it should be, right? It was for these disciples. It, it was, it was, it was life changing because when, when, when they, when he, when he was crucified and buried, they were hiding in an upper room. These disciples were like, "Man, I, I thought he was it. I thought he was the Messiah. I thought he was the one, that, but, I, but I guess not. I guess he's dead." So I guess he wasn't the guy. But then they saw something that changed him, that made him believe. And it was this resurrected Jesus. And they, they believed it. And they're like, man, we are all in now. It's like when you see something. Um, I'll tell you a story. <clears throat> People always, you ever see something and like nobody can convince you, uh, like you did not see that. I'm like, oh, yes, I did. I, I promise you I saw a cougar. At, around our, I, 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 I'm telling you, I saw, saw his tail, I'm like, it, it's been years ago, years ago that I saw one, and out by <laughs> where we live, and uh, everybody's like, you did not, my, my neighbor, John Bunnell, he's a biologist with the state of Illinois, he's like, you did not, see. I'm like, I'm, I, I'm telling you, I saw it, that's the way these disciples were, They're like, they saw something that changed them, that they believed with, with every ounce of their being, and so if we believe that, that belief should impact the level of boldness that we have as followers of Jesus Christ. You know, and uh, belief impacts our boldness outwardly, but it also has a tremendous impact inwardly. And I think that the impact that it has inwardly when you really, really, truly believe something is how we pray. And, I, and, and here, here's the thing, you know, we, I, I know we just finished, I, I just a couple of weeks ago finished a series on prayer, and we talked about praying big and specific, and I know I've talked to some of you, and you've done that, and, and you've seen God working in your life, uh, but prayer, I, I, so I want to talk about the boldness this morning of your prayer life, and I think sometimes prayer, when we talk about prayer, they're like, oh, are you kidding me? That's just, it's just kind of awkward. Uh, I had somebody this week, actually, a new Christian this week that asked that that asked me a question. She was like, "I don't, I don't really know how to pray. What do what do I say? How do how do I say it? Because you come to church and you sit and you listen to Pastor Mark pray, and he he can pray for like five minutes. I know that because some of my kids time him sometimes. I'm like, Dad, Mark's prayer was five minutes today. I'm like, Okay, talk to him about that. But some people pray, and, they, and, and it's so eloquent, and, and, it, and, and uh, you know, the, the people often feel like they just don't get it. You're, it's like a one-way conversation. You're talking in the thin air, and, you know, you're waiting for an answer. And, and, and sometimes it can just be, you know, you, know, you, you can't be undeterred by anything, and, or you can't be distracted, and, and I'm easily distracted. And so, but Jesus taught us, and so Jesus taught us how to pray, very simply, and I, I know it's a, it's, a, it's a, we could probably all say it together. Uh, you know, it, it's in Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 through 13, and the disciples are like, hey, how should we pray? And Jesus said, this is how you should pray. And here it is. You can say it along with me if you know it. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive those, or, or forgive our debtors. I have that King James version in my head. 
And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Jesus taught us that prayer. It, literally, it took less than 30 seconds. It's, it's not a complicated prayer, but it covers all the bases. And what I love about it, it's short, sweet, it's to the point. It's not a bunch of big, fancy church words. It's not eloquent. It's not, man, that was awesome. I mean, you, you, re, you hear somebody pray, and it's like, some people pray, and it's like, wow, that was like Jesus himself wrote that, you know? That's unbelievable. I don't pray that good. And you see this, that people are intimidated to pray uh, in, in, what, in what we do. And so I, I love that, you know, it, how and when and how often we pray, I think, represents our belief and our boldness in our prayer life. How and when and how often we pray believes that. And do we really believe, first, do we really believe that Jesus died on the cross and rose from the grave? And then I'm asking you to ask yourself these questions. Do I really believe that prayer can make a difference in my life? If I asked that question and said, hey, do you think that prayer can make a difference? Every, probably every hand would go up in this place. Or your, your hand would go up because you didn't want to be the one guy that didn't have his hand up. <laughs> but chances are, we believe it, but do we really exercise it? Does that con- And so often... I think sometimes we have different types of prayers, and a lot of times they're Hail Mary prayers. Um, you know, they're just like, hey, I, I'm, I'm in a jam. I've got something really going on in my life. I got a really bad diagnosis, or I got, uh, I've got this, I've got to pay taxes, and I don't have the money in the bank to pay taxes. Uh, I, got to, I got to pay my mortgage payment this month, or they're going to foreclose on my house. I've got this going on. I really, if I don't pass this test, I am going to fail this course. I am going to, whatever it is, chances are, at some point in time, you've prayed a prayer like that. I, I call them a Hail Mary they're like, you know, hey, Hail Mary's the pass. You know, for some of you football pass, you, you get that. Hail Mary pass. But, but most of the time, and I'll tell you a story. And a perfect example of this was when I was in Anna, and my dad was preaching, and I was a kid. But there was a, there was a little kid in, in our church, and he was, his, his name was Jeremy. And Jeremy was probably not the best behaved child in the world. He was one of those, you know. And uh, back in those days, uh, you know, kids in the service, you, you had to, you know, anybody grow up like that? Everybody, anybody get taken out of church? You know, and, and if you don't know what that means, when you get taken out of church, oh, <laughs> everybody knows, like, it's, you're, getting a, you're getting a whooping, you know? Everybody, anybody has, just honestly, anybody ever been taken out of church and spanked? I, I have, Yes. Yes, I see that hit. Anthony's yes, and I'm bitter about it. I need therapy. Two hands. <laughs> Apparently, it was a regular occurrence for Anthony. Uh, well, Jeremy was one of those kids that he had frequent flyer spanking miles, you know. And so I'll never forget, Dad was in the middle of his sermon, and Jeremy was, he was raised in Cain, and he was right over here on the right side of the church. And then, so his dad yanked him up and was headed out of the church. And you know, everybody in church was like, oh, poor Jeremy, you know. And I kid you not, this is, I, this is the God's honest truth. When he left, and I, he couldn't have been more than, I don't know, maybe it was five or six years. I don't know how old he was. But when, may, he may have been even younger than that. I can't remember. But as he was walking out, just before he left the, 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 the doors of the sanctuary, he was hanging over his dad's shoulder, and he respects and says, pray for me, people. <laughs> <laughs> I, I laughed. The entire congregation just busted up. And then his dad was laughing so hard that he couldn't spank him. So, so prayer works. Pray a bold prayer. I promise you it will work. And it does, and God comes through for us in those moments when we are facing a crisis, and Jeremy was facing a crisis that morning. He knew he was in for it, and he just, the only thing he had left was pray for me, people. Have you ever been there? Have you ever had to toss up a prayer like that? You were all you've got, the only hope you have is to look back and say, pray for me, people. <laughs> I've been there. But I think there's different types of prayer types. I, th- I think there's different types of prayers we pray. And what you pray for reflects what you believe about God. I believe that. 
You might want to write that down. What you pray for reflects what you believe about God. And there are different types of prayer types. And I think the first type is a selfish prayer. What if that means, what if when you are praying those selfish prayers, what if that means that you really believe that God just exists for you? That selfish prayer that we pray, what if that means we just believe that, that God exists for us? In the Lord's Prayer that I just talked about, that I, we, we just read through and, and prayed, and some of you know it by heart, there are some words in that. And it says, your kingdom come. It's about his kingdom. It's not about my kingdom. It's not about the kingdom of Trent. And that's difficult for us to get our head around because we are so concerned about what's going on in our little world that we don't begin to pray bigger than that. We don't pray outside of that circle. We just pray inside our own little circle. Our plans. You know, and, and I think sometimes we're like, okay, you know, I think sometimes it, when we pray, it's like we're saying, okay, God, here's how, I've got it all figured out. <laughs> here's the way it's gonna go down. I want you to do this, 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 and this, and this. And we forget to pray that your kingdom, Jesus taught us how to pray that, your kingdom come. When it doesn't work out the way we want it to, we get frustrated, we get disappointed, we get upset. I've even had people say, well, I prayed for that and nothing happened. It's because we're in our little world. We pray small prayers. What if we, when we pray small prayers that re, 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 reflects our lack of faith in a big God? Do we really think God can do big things? Do you really believe that? We pray things like, bless this day. And it's good to pray that. I mean, I'm not saying anything wrong with that. Bless this day. Be with us. That's a prayer that we always pray. I just think God laughs at that. He's like, okay, I already told you. I'll be with you always. <laughs> already got that one. Check. Let's get on to something big. Pray something bigger than that. We pray small little tiny prayers. Here's one that I think probably hits probably a lot of us close to home if we're honest it's not that we pay it's not that we pray a selfish prayer or we pray, or we pray a small prayer we just don't pray we rarely spend time alone with God one of the things that Jesus did and, and, and I think he's working on me at this because I am absolutely 150% not a morning person I don't like it I do not like getting out of the bed. I don't. People are like, I'm up at 4 a.m. Not me. I'm lucky if I'm up by 8. No, just kidding. I mean, I get up. I just don't like getting anybody else like that. I just, I, I, I can stay up. I'm a, I'm a night owl. Kind of, I like to stay up. You know, call me at 1230 tonight. I'm probably up. I, I just stay up. But, I, but anyway, as I get older, I don't sleep well. And so God has been waking me up very early. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> He's just, I'm, I'm laying there at 5, 5 a.m. going, oh, my word, seriously, God? Well, I have to pee. I have that thing going on. But. <laughs> but I get up, and then I can't go back to sleep, and God just talks to me, and he just, every morning, and, and I think, you know, the other morning, and I'm starting in my life to change. I don't know if it's just because I'm getting old or what. I think, uh, you know, I'll start going to bed at 7 o'clock and getting up at 4, but I, I don't know what it is, but, but there's that time, and I have found at that time in morning, and Jesus knew that too. The scripture says that very early in the morning, very early in the morning, he would get up and spend time with God alone. And I just wonder how many of us professing Christians actually even spend time alone with God every day. We rarely pray. What if that reflects that we don't really believe that God answers prayer? We want to have a relationship with him, but we don't ever talk to him. <laughs> How would that work with your wife, guys? Some of you, I don't know, but I'd like to find out. <laughs> we don't ever spend time with him. We wonder why we're not growing in our relationship with him, and we rarely find time to get alone and just 
get alone with God. I think that's why a lot of us guys like the deer hunt. <laughs> I know some of us like to just climb up in a stand. I know Randy, does, I've had that conversation with Randy. I just like to sit up there and spend time with God because where I hunt, I don't ever see any deer. If anybody want to help me with that. <laughs> or we have that Hail Mary prayer. You know, and it, it's the one I was just talking about. It's the Jeremy Fuller prayer, you know. It's, it's, it's that, hey, I've tried everything else. And it, have you ever, you ever heard anybody say this phrase? Well, all we can do now is pray. You may ever say that to you? All you can do now is pray. That's because we've exhausted everything that we've tried to do. We try to fix it ourselves before we really ever just go to prayer. And some of us are, are better at it than others, and I get it. You know, but we, we pray that prayer, well, shoot, all we got's God. <laughs> all we got is pray. God of the universe, he created everything and every, all of us, but, you know, hey, it's all we got left. Tried everything else, why don't we start here? So I want, I want, you to, I want everyone to think about, I'm going to ask you to do an exercise, because this is kind of a self-reflecting message. Hopefully, it, you're, you're getting that message this morning. I want to ask you one thing, one question this morning. I want you to think about, here's my question. Think about everything that you prayed for since last Sunday. What is it? What have you prayed for in the last six days? Some of you are like, man, I don't know if I've ever even, I'm having to think. Did I pray for anything? I prayed maybe and then, I want you to think about, so get that middle note, write it down if you need to. What are the things that you prayed for this past week? And then I want you to think about, if God answered, if God said last week was the week that he was just answering yes to everything, just happened to catch him on that week, he's running the special. I'm saying yes to everything. If God answered one, if he answered every one, every single one of the prayers that you prayed last week, how would the world be different today? What would have changed in our world today based on the prayers that you prayed last week? That was sobering for me. I'd probably be not have paid any taxes this week. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> That's how it would have been different. I don't know. Would lost people have been saved? Or is your prayer just centered in your world? Centered in your world. Maybe some of you would be married. I don't know. I'm praying for God will send me a spouse. God will send me somebody in my life. Maybe some of you would be dating somebody this week. I don't know. Maybe your husband would have picked up his clothes. I don't know. Would have put the toilet seat down. I don't know what you're praying for. Maybe you've gotten a raise. Maybe you'd be living in a new house. Maybe you'd be driving a new car. Maybe grandma would have been healed. Maybe your friend's marriage would have been better. But how would the world have been different because of the prayers that you prayed last week? So if you want to make a big difference, you see, if we're going to make, and, and, and I, I know this is kind of a, just a generic statement, but if we're going to make a difference in our world, we're going to have to start praying bigger. You understand that? All of us are Salem Grace Church of the Nazarene. If we are going to be the type of church that reaches lost people, because I think in our heads, that sounds good. We like that. We can put that on the bulletin. We want to be a church that reaches lost people. But unless we're praying that way, unless we're praying that God gives us boldness to be able to share our faith and be able to walk and talk with people and, and talk about Jesus and mention the name of Jesus because we absolutely 150% believe it and nobody's talking us out of it, we have got to be praying bigger. We've got to be praying that God will use us, that he will challenge us to be bold, that he will give us some kind of spiritual mm, kick in the pants. We've got to be praying bigger. 
Here's a couple of things that I think is different. And so these disciples, after, I'm gonna have to hurry. Peter and John went and they preached this fiery sermon. So in Acts chapter 4, 23 through 24, it says, on the release, Peter and John, after they preached this fiery message and got in trouble, because they mentioned the name Jesus. Peter and John went back to their own people and reported all the chief priests and elders had said to them. When they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer to God. So in essence, he went back to his little church and said, hey, this is what happened to us. I preached this message and you know, me and John got in trouble and here's what happened. Here's what they said if we mention the name of Jesus. And he went back to his church and said, hey, let's pray together. And together they began to pray. And you know, there's something about praying together. You know, we're not really good at this. In fact, we have a prayer encounter this Thursday. <laughs> This coming Thursday, we have a prayer. There's a group of people in our church that have, have caught a vision of how important prayer is. And they said, hey, you know what? We're going to meet on a Thursday night. There's not going to be a big deal. We're just going to get together. We're going to talk a little bit. And some of us are going to pray. And if you feel comfortable praying, that's cool. And if you don't, that's cool too. But we're going to pray. We're going to meet together. And that's exactly what the disciples did, is they met together. And I know it's kind of awkward, you know, you get, but the scripture says, where two or three are gathered together, we, I am here. And so they begin to pray together, and they have these little things, and, you know, prayer meetings are weird, and, you know, you, sometimes they make you stand up and hold hands in a circle, and that's just awkward, because some guys are really sweaty, I've talked about that, you know, and it's just like, I don't want to pray, and some guy's the gripper, you know, he grips really hard, and then this size, the dead fish guy that does just like, then your nose starts to itch, and you don't want to break the circle, you know, I, I get it, it's like, oh, come on, please. And then somebody's prayer sounds awesome, and yours is like, uh, God, do stuff, amen, you know. But whatever it is, they didn't care. They put all that aside, and they said, you know what, we're going to pray together. We're going to begin to pray big. And they said this. This is their prayer. It's in Acts chapter 4, 24 to 25. Sovereign Lord, they said. And other they, they started there, which means basically, if you look up Sovereign Lord, what that means is they recognize that, hey, you are you're the boss, you are the supreme ruler. They acknowledge that he is the boss. You're in control of everything. Sovereign Lord, they said, you made the heaven and the earth and the sea and everything in them. And I think they do that just to get some perspective. Hey, we are going to talk to the God that made the heaven and the earth. This isn't just like we're walking in and going, hey, you know, God, what's up? You know, if, you, if, if God walked in this place, you'd be like, oh man, you'd be on your face. I think there's a perspective that when you enter prayer, I think sometimes we just forget that we are talking to the God of the universe. He made you, for crying out loud. You spoke by the Holy Spirit. Indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate met together and Gentiles and people of the city conspired against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed. They did what your power and what and will had decided beforehand should happen. You is a common theme in their prayer. Continuing to acknowledge the sovereignty of God, and hey, we know this is all about you, God. This is not about my little world. This is about the purpose that you placed me here on this planet. I'm just, I'm just here to be used by you. This is all about you. Let's make me bold. That was their prayer. And their prayer, are two, they prayed two bold prayers. Here it is. Let's, and I would challenge you this week to pray two bold prayers. The first one is this, pray for boldness. Acts chapter 4, 29 says, Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants. This was their prayer. This is Peter and, James, Peter and John's prayer. Enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. And I'd be like, okay, wait a minute, hold on. You just did that, Peter. You just did that. That's what got you in trouble in the first place. That's what got you thrown in jail. But Peter preached to 3,000 they were saved. Isn't it boldness that caused the problem? But they still prayed for boldness. How often do we pray for boldness? Have you ever prayed for boldness? Most people never have. Here's what we pray. We pray that God will help me do a good presentation at work, that maybe I'll make an A in this class, that I'll get a job, that my finances, that we'll heal somebody that, that's sick or uh, the hospital report, or I'll pray that that pimple goes away or whatever. It is. Those, those are the type of prayers we pray. Have you ever prayed that God would, would give you a kind of boldness in your walk with faith that no, people are like, wow, did you see that guy? That's what they prayed for. Prayed for boldness. I prayed that prayer one time that God would give me boldness, share my faith. Be careful praying that. My car broke down. I had to ride home from Tuscola with a guy in a tow truck. Had to share my faith. 
It's what happens when you pray bold. I wonder if that's the reason we, you know, in Ephesians chapter 3.20 says, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine according to his power that is work within us. In other words, we're praying to somebody that can do more than we can ask or imagine. And I can imagine some crazy stuff. Can't you? I wonder if that's why we don't pray big is because deep down we don't really believe in our hearts that God is capable to do exceedingly more than we can ask or imagine. Acts chapter 4.30 says, stretch out your hand to heal and perform miraculous signs and wonders through the, name of Je- uh, through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. You ever wonder what a sign does? A sign points to something. It points to a real thing. Hey, there's a curve ahead. Hey, there's a stop ahead. Hey, there's construction. It points to a sign. It points to the real thing that's going to happen. Miracles in the church, outside the church. Why don't, why don't people pray for miracles? That's the second thing. Begin to pray for miracles. Most of our prayers are little. We don't pray for miracles. I want to ask the band to come. So two things this week. Begin to pray that God will make us bold people. That he will make us bold followers of Jesus Christ that your prayers will be big, that we will begin to pray for lost people. You know, sometimes I'd love to say, instead of, uh, nothing wrong with praying for for sick people, and and I get that, that's a a need. We pray for those needs, and we believe that God can heal people. And we're gonna pray boldly that they do. What would happen if we begin to pray for, for people that are sick spiritually? What would happen as a church collectively that our number one prayer is, God, give us an opportunity to share my faith with somebody that doesn't know you, that I, can, that I can share with them the joy and the hope of the gospel and the good news that Christ died for them and they can be saved and be baptized and be part of this congregation and, and live for Jesus and die and go to heaven. What would happen if we begin to pray for people in our community like that, that we begin to pray for Salem? I mean, really pray for people, that we begin to pray for miracles. You know, I remember um, a lot of you know the McGee's and uh, uh, Weston was uh, he's one of Caden's best friends and was at our house a lot um, from kindergarten on and um, I remember when he had the accident and they had the accident I, I just remember praying very boldly and praying and, and that was a, that's, that's an instance where somebody was sick or injured but I remember praying that and, and I remember how the prayers changed you know, the first thing that we prayed was that he would just live that he would make it I can remember praying that he would just live he lived then I remember praying that he, he was on a vent and he was unresponsive that he would wake up. And when they took, that he would just open his eyes. Very specific, bold prayer. Open his eyes. I can remember praying that they'd take him off the vent, that he would actually actually be able to breathe on his own, that his lungs would start working, and that he would actually be able to actually take a breath of air and breathe it out. Very bold, specific prayer. It's like, just get us there, Jesus. It was like one prayer after another. He began to answer those prayers. And I can remember praying that he would get off the feeding tube, that he didn't have to have that feeding tube carrying around. Uh, he eats like a horse. Fed him a burrito at El Rancherito this week. <laughs> Prayed that he would begin to walk. That he would have mobility. Very bold, specific prayer. Our church built a wheelchair ramp because the doctors told us that he would never walk again fact of the matter is he didn't need the wheelchair ramp for more than about a month. (laughs) Do we really believe, and I'm still praying for Weston, I'm praying, my my specific prayer that I'm praying now is that he'll talk. That actually God will give him his speech back. And I'm praying very bold. I'm coming boldly before the throne. I'm not sure about you, Acts chapter 431 says, after they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken. 
and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke to the Word of God boldly. I want that to happen here. I want this place to shake. I want you to shake. I want you to feel that, oh, I've seen something and it's changing me and nobody's talking me out about it, especially guys, especially you guys, dads. Man, there is nothing I think that is greater than a guy that stands up and says, you know what, here's what I believe and I'm gonna lead my family in this. I'm gonna be the head of my household. I'm gonna show my kids what it looks like. I'm going to be there. I'm going to love my wife. I'm going to respect her. I'm going to be the head of this household, and I'm going to pray. And for moms to say, you know what? I'm going to support my husband. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to tell him that I'm thankful that he's a good husband, that he provides for us, and that he works hard, and that we begin to pray as a church. I'm going to ask you to stay in this morning. <coughs> Father, thank you so much for what your scripture teaches us and how we can become bold people. Lord, help us to begin to be, uh, help us to, to establish a prayer life with you that is consistent. Help us to to take your word for, for truth and know that we can come, as Jeremy shared earlier, that we can become, that we can come boldly before the throne and we can, we can ask you and your scripture tells us that you have not because you ask not. Lord, help us to begin to ask for things in your kingdom, not in ours. But Lord, that you may begin to use us and work through us to reach lost people in your kingdom. Father, help us not not to be afraid to pray the prayers for healing and and, and, and our finances. We know you hear those prayers, Lord, but help us to not just be to be centering those prayers in our own little circle, that, that they're small, selfish prayers, Lord, but they're, that they're big, that they're part of your kingdom, that it's worldwide, Lord, that, that, it's, that it's bigger than even just Salem. Lord, help us to begin to, to get a vision of your kingdom and what that looks like and what you would have us to do. Thank you for the prayers that you've answered in our lives, Lord. Help us to be, pray bold, very specific prayers. We ask you this morning, Lord Jesus, I'm asking you very specifically this morning, Jesus, to change the hearts of everyone in here. Lord, we're praying collectively, we're gathering together, and we are praying collectively that you would make us bold, that we would might be able to speak, as Peter and John did, that we can speak your word with boldness and not be ashamed of you before men. Thank you, Father, for your love your forgiveness and your faithfulness to us and your precious holy name.